Alright, so now, our last video went into adding time. This video is going to go into the concept of, of subtracting time. And so, when we're looking at subtracting time, one of the things that we're going to be looking at is if we're trying to find a start time, or if we're trying to find a time elapsed between two different times. So, let's go through, and you see I do have my handy dandy clock here. Our old clock, which means on the hour, our quarter past, half past, and a quarter till or a quarter two. So, always remember that. So, our first example. Remember, one hour is 60 minutes. So, what we're going to do is we're going to take our end time of 9.13 p.m., our time elapsed of 6 hours 40 minutes, and we're going to try to find our start time. Alright, so our end time of 9.13 p.m., we're going to change that to hours and minutes. So, 9 hours, 13 minutes, subtract, 6 hours, 40 minutes. Now, when we look at this, we see that we're going to have to do some regrouping because we cannot remove 40 minutes from 13 minutes. So I am going to regroup 8 hours. I'm going to regroup an hour over to here. So 60 minutes plus 13 minutes is going to be 73. Now I can subtract. So 73 minutes minus 40 minutes is going to be 33 minutes. Then 8 hours minus 2, I mean 8 hours minus 6 hours is going to be 2 hours. So our start time. is 233 that's going to be p.m. now to make sure that I'm right let me check that so I'm going to take our start time and I'm going to add our time elapsed to see if I get the same end time so six hours 40 minutes and then plus two hours 33 minutes. Just trying to ch quickly check my work. So that's 73 minutes. Then that's going to be 8 hours. But before I add my hours, I have to remember that 73 minutes, that's over a 60 minute hour. So I got to regroup. So I'm going to cross that out. That's 13 minutes. Because I took 60 away from it. Now I'm going to regroup an hour here. So that's 13 minutes, 1, 7, 9. So 9 hours, 13 minutes, or a time of 9.13 p.m. And we do check. So our start time will be 2.33 p.m. And now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this last example for you to work out and solve in your notebook. That way you have a frame of reference and you can go back and look at the work I've done to make sure that you work out this example correctly. And that is the end of our lesson.